Over the last few months, you probably have run into this word, huh? O-U-T-L-I-E-R-S. And you, like most of us, have said, what is that and how do I pronounce it? In Canada, outlier, uh, outlier, uh, but you know what? In this case, we're talking about a smart aleck guest who has an MD, he is a lawyer, and has an MBA beside. I don't even know that I necessarily want to go ahead with this conversation. Well, the other letters are like E-I-E-I-O. So we're, 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 we're getting close. All right. Well, since Malcolm Gladwell was on CBS Sunday Morning the other day, and, and, and I saw him, that was the first time that I really was aware of the word. You pronounce it since you have proudly put it on the cover of the book. In ingredients of outliers. But what does it mean? So for me, it means so you, Pat, you're an outlier. It means someone who who starts at excellence and then goes and then goes way past that. You can that. come back anytime you like. Thank you. you. I'll be, be here tomorrow. Regular guest, Dr. John Schufeld. Um, so now we know what it means. But how do I recognize one? It would be nice if I would be able to say either watching a lecture in an audience or at a cocktail party. Hey, wait a minute, that's an outlier. That person's an outlier. So for 30 years, I've been really fortunate to engage with really some high, high achieving people. And I'd always look back and say, what is it about them that makes them different? And so I've kind of cataloged these traits over 30 years, and that's what the book is about. So it's about all these different traits, and we, and we all have them. We just have to kind of be reminded that they're, they're within us and we can excel at those traits. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you are asked about what one single characteristic is that all of them have in common? I think all of them have humility, it's some degree really? of humility. And so the, 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 the best people I know are the ones that rarely talk about themselves. They're the ones that let their actions speak for their words. Uh, they're like the previous pastor you had on. They're, they're like you. You don't have to. Your, your credentials and your integrity speak for themselves. All right, but you are a person who has a medical degree. You have a law degree. Are you also humble? I hope so. I mean, I'm usually the bad example in the book. So there's a lot of good examples, but I'm often, I'm off, I'm the, I'm the foil. Why are you a bad because example? Because I've made every mistake in the book. And so, and most of them failing, humorous. Though. That's failing, and one of the facets in the book is the value of failure. I really like that. Absolutely, fail fast and, and learn from it and, and move on. But I think it all, but a lot of it goes back to humility. People who have large egos are afraid to fail because they don't want to shatter the veneer of their ego. And so if you can get past the ego part of it, I, mean, I think the whole world is your oyster because then you can learn and make mistakes and kind of build the wings as you fly. We can test your humility by your book sales, so let's try, okay? You bet. Where is the book available right now, this instant, if people want to tear out right after the show? The book is on Amazon.com and IngredientsOfOutliers.com, but be careful because we don't want to crash the servers at Amazon. I think it's sold maybe two or 300. <laughs> Mostly to me. <laughs> Name some familiar outliers. Um, oh, there's a lot of them, and a lot of them, but a lot of them you don't know because a lot of them are people I've encountered along the way. Sandra Day O'Connor is one we all know. Yeah, she, she's a classic outlier. When you talk to her, she doesn't doesn't brag about herself, and she is just she is all in the game. There's some fighter pilots I talk about in here, some Navy SEAL team members, who when you meet them, they're the most humble, down earth people in the world. They'll admit their failures. They like to mentor others. They are clearly outliers. You know, I've, I've noticed you're talking about the Navy SEALs. I've noticed every time that I hear um, a, a Congressional Medal of Honor address any part of an audience, an interview or a lecture, it is remarkable how consistently they seem to sincerely be directing attention to the other people in their military unit, always. I couldn't have done it without them. Why me? Why can't I just give this award to this platoon that I'm in? Right. It's a team effort, and so I, I, I'm, the, I'm the physician on the Arizona SWAT team, or the, the Phoenix PD SWAT team. And uh, so some of the people on that team are ex-Navy SEALs, and they are the most compassionate, generous, down-to-earth people you'd meet. But when you hear about what they've done and they don't tell you, you wonder how it is the person you're talking to has done all those remarkable things. You know, when I was reading the book, I was thinking, wow, all of these people with all of these accomplishments and this humility, do we have any outliers in Congress? You know, I think John McCain's an outlier, Ken. I mean, really? you, you read his book, you hear what he's done. You know, he was burned trying to, one of his first trips off the carrier, he was burned very badly. 
Um, when he was a POW, he could have gotten out, but he decided not to, to stay behind, to, to not set that example. Um, I mean, that's an American hero. That, to me, is an outlier. Whether you agree with him politically or not, he's still clearly an outlier. Can I learn to become one? I think so. I think these are things that, that you should have been taught at the dinner table. In my case, my sister beat it out of me or beat it into me most daily and, and still tries to. What if my parents were non-responsive people who felt that it would be spoiling me by talking to me positively about my qualities? So I, I, came, from that, I came from that background as, as well. And so it was always what, why you could also be better. And I think it really spurred me on to kind of change perspective. And, and, and once I got to believe in myself a little bit, and it wasn't until Drake, it wasn't until really, you know, Drake in the morning that I really felt that way. And then once, once I did that, it certainly turned the, turned the light on for this me. This is not Drake, the popular music singer, by the way, that he patterned his life after. He's talking about Drake University, the home of the Bulldogs in Des Moines, Iowa. This is the home of a gathering of people that are really unique unto themselves. Maybe you are one, the ingredients of outliers. And this is Pat McMahon, the one here at the panel the last few minutes without a medical or law degree, but I get by. Stick around. <laughs>